Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about the new features in the Unify Network Application 6.5.53. Now, just to clear up any confusion when I'm flipping through the different release notes, the 6.5.51 was the release candidate version where they really talked about all the release updates and changes, but the final version was 6.5. 0.53, and that has these changes in there, plus a few more little bug fixes that brought it from release candidate to fully released version. Now, as far as testing process, the testing process I do is I load this pretty much when they come out, provided I don't see anything really bad. We do some internal testing. I then do some testing for several days and see if it works because, well, we manage our clients with this. We manage a lot of client sites. What we don't do is manage a bunch of cloud keys. So my update experience is running on Debian, running MongoDB in Java. So this is not a what it looks like if you're running on a unified dream machine or if you're running it on one of the cloud keys. We don't manage those for clients. We manage our clients within our controller. And the same thing goes for Hostify. I will leave a link to their testing process. And they have a very similar system where they go through and test all these updates and roll them out. Hostify, if you're not familiar, I've done several videos on them and they just do a great job if people ask me, hey, I want to have a managed controller, but I want to be able to have full control over it, but have someone else manage the patches and updates. I highly recommend Hostify. Yes, I do have an offer code because we're an affiliate of theirs, and I think it's a great service if you're looking just to not deal with it yourself. All right, back to the other thing is there are some enhancements to the Unify routing equipment, but I still stand by my video on the topic linked down below. Should you buy a Unify Dream Machine, Dream Machine Pro, any of the Unify routing equipment? These updates address a few issues, but I'm not going to dive much into them. We just don't deploy these out in the field. We don't really recommend them to too many people uh, unless it's home users or people that, well, I watch the video. I break it down of who should buy or shouldn't buy a Unify Dream Machine. I just feel unfortunate that so many people buy it and it doesn't do what they wanted. That's why I made a video that hopefully before you buy, you would watch that video and go, oh, it does what I want it to or no, that won't fit my needs. That's all. And this application update doesn't solve that problem. And if you're asking what about the new versions of the hardware they're releasing, it's all driven by this Unify software application. So until the software fixes it address all the problems, because it's not really a hardware limitation, it's just the software doesn't do certain things, that problem will persist no matter what hardware they release until they fix it all in the software. All right, before we dive into the details of this video, if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to LaurentSystems.com. If you'd like to hire share a project, there's a hires button right at the top, which does include a lot of Unify and network consulting. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, which, yes, does include a link if you'd like to sign up for Hostify because you want someone else to deal with all these patches and updates. All right, now let's start diving into the details. Now, as I mentioned, we're running Unify Network Application 6.5.53 because that's the full release. And you can see it just says, fixes gateway configuration failure when traffic rules are configured. And there's not a lot of other notes on this. All the notes you're going to pulling from are the 6.5.51 notes because this is when it was release candidate. And this has all the major changes that are essentially for this version. The going from 0.51 to 0.53 is the release candidate versus going into full release. Now, when you're... Diving into all these details, there's a lot, but let's just cover a couple of the highlights here. And some of these may affect you, but as I said, we don't have any clients using Unify routing equipment. So I'm just going to be skipping over those because I just don't have the time right now to test all of those features uh, because lack of using Unify routing equipment. Now, the big things are going to be right down here under bug fixes. I've had a lot of people ask me about this. I don't think I've seen it ever on our controller, but I know enough people ask about it. I know there are scenarios where this happens. It gets basically in an adoption loop, keeps retrying to adopt something. I, the solution to this when we've had people that have worked with like internal IT teams you work with, not on our controller, was just to basically manually adopt them or sometimes push firmware updates to them. I don't know exactly what gets out of sync, but they kind of go in a loop like there. So they're going to stop retrying to auto adopt after three failed attempts. And what happens is when you take the device off, it still just kind of goes into a loop of adopting. I think restarting controller stops the loop, but yeah, I'm glad they fixed that on there. Now, there's also the issues with the backups and fix backup, not respecting retention settings for notifications and fix issue when you find network backups, fill up the data partition. Backups are incredibly important. I have mine set to be automatically running. It keeps them for so many weeks. And then I have a tool that automatically uh, offloads them from the controller. So it's constantly being backed up. Actually, I have my backup set to run every hour because we're always making changes and I never know when those changes might be. So 
when you manage a lot of sites in a single controller for a lot of clients, it's important to have all these backups. But of course, the thing that I do recommend when doing these backups is I only back up the settings and not all the DPI retention and statistics. And apparently it decided it was going to back some of those up anyways and didn't respect that. I don't know what scenario caused it, but hey, I'm glad they did fix that on there. Now, one of the other issues that's really nice that they fix is directly related, I believe, to the adoption problem is auto update device firmware when adopting new devices. The prompt you get is actually to adopt and update or just adopt and you can update later. You'll find that, well, if their firmware is too many versions behind, there may be conflict if you're running too new of a controller and too old of a firmware and you try to adopt that. I believe that's what leads to some of those adoption loops. I always push the firmware right away to a new device on there prior to adoption, but this doesn't give you a choice now. It just goes ahead and updates the new firmware. That's actually, to me, a great thing because I believe that's kind of hand-in-hand -hand solving that adoption if, issue. If I had to guess as to what's going on there is you get in a loop trying to adopt something that's too many firmware versions behind. And I don't really have an issue. I've been pushing all the latest firmware versions. I'm up to date as of today, November 26, 2021. So I haven't had any issues with all the latest firmware on there. Now, one more thing I'll mention is limit Mongo Wired Tiger cache size to 256. More details here. This is kind of related to, and I've talked about this before, when you start taking a controller and not managing it for just a few sites and start managing many sites and many devices, you have to do a little bit of tuning for those larger sites and how to tune the Unify network for high number of devices. They've updated this as well to cover some of the different connection settings. And I've discussed this before for some of our larger ones is making sure you have proper number informed threads, proper number of little details and making sure everything is set proper in here. So this has been updated again, like enabling high performance Java garbage collector. I don't think that was in the last time I looked at this video and Mongo WT cache size default equals true. Now, Riley Chase over at Hostify, he also does some tuning for the same reasons because some of the clients he has are, well, they have a thousand, two thousand devices maybe attached. And of course at scale, he has quite a few number of instances. So you have to do a little bit of fine tuning to make sure all this works for those larger installs. It doesn't necessarily work out of the box. And it is also one of the reasons where cloud keys will not be optimal. If you have too many devices, a cloud key you can't tune because there's just not enough hardware to expand the memory to it. So it works fine for majority of people, but those of us that are running sites, say individual sites with like 400, 500, or even a thousand devices, there is a little bit of tuning you do have to change on there. And the last thing I'll talk about on this list that's really exciting is the ability to lock a client to a specific access point. This is really helpful if you have IoT devices or cameras because you'll maybe have them in between two access points and maybe it kind of bobs between the the one and the other, and you want it to lock to a single device. This is now ability that you have with this. And I'll show you how that works. It's the ability to lock it, but you do require, as it says, UAP firmware 5.76 or newer. So I have all my systems up to date. I can show that it's pretty easy to do. By the way, it's only available in the new UI. And let's go ahead and talk about it because there's a lot of little visual elements here that I could note, but let's just show you what they look like. And we'll start with the really well enhanced, and this is in the new user interface, they did a great job of making this look better, making this work smoother. And this is your topology display. You have any display options here, and this is still a problem. I don't know what to do about when you have sites with lots of devices on there. Um, it becomes kind of unreadable, but if we narrow it down to just a few devices, they've just done a great job of making this look really smooth. I can show descriptions, take them away. I think this has become just a great feature overall for those of you mentioning of it's broken for me when you have a controller that this gets broken on it's best just to back up and restore i haven't found another fix that works well as consistently as just reloading and resetting up your controller and restoring the system back from your backup. I've not had any problems running it in Debian as I have for years. This has been an in-place upgrade for quite a number of years, but if this is broken for you, um, yeah, I don't really, that's my solution to fixing it on there. By default, it doesn't show the offline devices. So you can click that there, but this is just to me really nice the way you can slide these around, get them really well. And of course they're all clickable now and go right to the settings for any particular device to be able to set things, see what link it's plugged into. 
I I really like this. Now you notice because I'm using PF Sense as my firewall, there's not a firewall part of this. And if you have any non-unified switches in between, you'll end up with just gaps because it doesn't understand non-unified switches. But it's great when you do have a full unify switches and access points, which are my favorite things that they have, not any of their routing equipment. Back over to clicking this and it brings us right back to a nice centered view. Like I said, I think they did a nice job in improving this. Now let's talk about how they actually have the Unify devices. And we have the same display options right here. Now, once again, we're in the new UI. I, I think the new UI is coming along quite well and they're making it consistent across all of here. So I, I'm glad to see progress of how well this works, being able to easily see all the columns. Network, I need to save firmware versions if I want. I can start displaying everything on here. CPU usage. I think they did a nice job on this, but there is one thing that's still really missing from it. Well, two things major, really. First one is I liked it better when these could pop out and slide them around. That just makes sense because I sometimes want to open two different switches and maybe have them side by side. There's no way to do that in the new UI, only in the old UI. Second big problem is if you are in this UI, there's not an option to restart. And that's kind of annoying because I want to be able to just push and say restart or locate because sometimes you run through and you want to restart devices for whatever changes you may have made in a network that a restart would solve that problem for. And sometimes you want to restart all the devices at once and there's not a group restart, but at least I could run down the list and just click restart, 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 restart on each device. And that would work great. That's something you have to go into each one and to locate when you're setting up and we've done videos on how we do these large deployments. When we have a whole lot of them on the table and we want to locate each one, going into each one and going into the settings and choosing locate seems just way more tedious to, to flash the system and make it work. So I'm not, not a big fan of those features being missing, but hey, maybe they'll get them in a new UI and we won't have to switch back and forth. Now well, let's go over here to client devices. And same thing here, they've done a nice job of showing me the experience and I can see that this is connected to gigabit, gigabit, fast ethernet, and down the list, I can look at each one of these. There's no insights in here because these are only, it's only gonna give you insights other than some of the connection history if you have one of their routing equipments for the traffic stats, but that's not really a big deal to me. And here is the use fixed IP address if you're using theirs and default to uh, different profiles. But let's find a wireless device and talk about locking it somewhere. And that's where same thing we're going to go for consistency go over here and i don't want to show any wired clients just show me the 2.4 clients or maybe the 5 gigahertz clients all right and uh what do we have here pixel 4. all right and what's it attached to lock to access point really simple select access point we have three different ones here at my office and uh I can just say only connect to this one here. Pretty simple way of doing it. Maybe I'll do some testing in the future on it. It seemed to work. I didn't really have any problems with it, but it's not something I need for my phone, but it may be something, like I said, if you've got some different wireless cameras connected and they're hopping back and forth between them or you, and you have a preferred network access point, the kind of the weird workaround was sometimes putting only the Wi-Fi on those devices that were close to it. There's been workarounds for some glad there's no more band-aids and workarounds that the easy way to do it is to go ahead set this lock it to access point and the devices stay right on there now the last thing i'll cover is just the overall look they've given to the new ui i really like that they're coming along with it but it still is quirky one we don't have much in here in terms of our dashboard unless you've decided to go with the unified routing equipment and I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself because I am. I just don't use much of the Unify routing equipment because of all the reasons I mentioned in that previous video. There's still unusual things that Unify does that I don't understand. Um, they show my browser version right here that I'm running on Linux. I think that's still kind of odd. That's why the Penguin's here. It has nothing to do with the controller. It just says I'm on controller 6.53, but I'm using Linux 9604644, which is just the browser version. So kind of strange. The dashboard though, like I said, is very limited right here, but at least all the other stuff like the topology, the unified devices, the things we use all the time have just much improved in this UI. I don't find myself going back and forth other than for things like locating and restarting because it's convenient. But overall, I think they're doing a nice job on getting all of this kind of put together in a new UI. I'm still not a big fan of this though. Here you can see all the Wi-Fi and AP groups, but you go to networks, it just shows one 
network without the other networks in here. They've just moved a lot of that around and made it a little bit more confusing. And I'm not really sure why they did that because if we go here, I mean, you can find it, it's in there. Under advanced features, here's all the other networks that we have designed in the network groups and isolated groups and switch port programming. All that's in here. It's just under advanced features as opposed to just networks. And if you're going over to system and we'll switch back to the other interface, deactivate the new UI and go back over the networks. It's just under networks. I don't really understand why they decided to put it under somewhere else. It makes it confusing at first where you go, I don't know where those things are. And then you find out that they're not really hidden. They're just, well, in a different location for some reason they thought to spread that around. Now the, there are updates to things like threat management. Once again, it's all related to the having a unified dream machine or any of the unified USG gateways, routing devices. They've made a lot of enhancements there, but like I said, that's not something I'm really gonna cover in this particular video. So overall, my testing has gone well with it. It seems to work perfectly fine. I haven't run into any real problems. I will be doing an updated video of kind of a getting started with Unify because I was realizing my older videos, well, they're older and Unify has made a lot of progress on the UI. I think it's a solid system. I haven't had really any troubles with any of the updates we did for our system, but of course I run this in a virtual machine, back up the entire virtual machine, even before I start the update process. So I have everything in a row, just in case I have to regress back to the other version. But after running it for about a week now, I haven't had any issues at all. No scenarios came up, but that's for me and hosting many different sites for my clients that are all been set up by us. And we don't have any really weird or unusual setups, or at least I don't think of them weird or unusual. Those all went well. I've reprovisioned and updated and changed all the settings on things. No problem. And you can follow and I'll leave a link down below to the pressing process they do over at Hostify because they're still slowly rolling this out among their client base as well. So as long as you have a backup, which you should always have a backup, even when you're not doing an update, go ahead and update it. It'd be my opinion on this. But if something goes wrong, make sure you have a way to roll it back. It's just the controller software. So it's not like it ever blanks out sites. At least this is not a problem I've ever run into. And when I've had updates go wrong and found a lot of bugs in them, I've updated it. It'll just get into some weird configuration problems. I just revert back and wait till see if there's a point release that fixes it. It's usually as simple as that. And also you can roll forward the updates and block it off from internet access and log into the controller and say, all right, is the controller up and running before I, you know, deal with any of this? Because one thing it may do, and it shouldn't disrupt any clients and no disruptions were noted at all when I did this update, it may reprovision them, but it didn't restart any switches when it did that. So any of the reprovisioning didn't seem to cause any issues. And once I ran it for a few days is when I pushed all the firmware updates to the latest version. Because on occasion, there's been times where the firmware updates also require a newer version of the Unify controller. And you have to make sure that's all lined up. So my opinion is go ahead and update it and I'll leave links to everything I talked about down below. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the hire us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.